Hey everyone, sorry, I, um, apparently there's some issue with, um, uh, stitching some of the videos together on, um, one of my other systems, so I was informed that it, the video starts to error out around the classes, um, section, so what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and cover that again, um, on a different machine, and hopefully this video comes out a little bit better than the back the last one so thank you for those of you that um, let me know that there was an issue with the video I will add um, a couple day extension for this module due to the video having some issues because I know that it is Friday and some of you may have went to go work on it earlier or later so what I'm gonna do right now is just I'm on the um, Ubuntu VM the uh, SDN VM so I'm going to go ahead and clone down uh, the repository that has all of my examples in it. Let's see that it showed up. Okay, cool. All right, so now I'm going to open up Atom. And I was showing someone a few things on there earlier, so no, I didn't want to save that. And uh, you can see it gives you the nice welcome guide. Um, I always uncheck this one, show the welcome guide when opening Adam, just because it's annoying to me. And again, you know, this isn't the only one out there. Um, I've started using Sublime Text as well, which um, very similar to Adam. I guess it's just going to boil down to your preference. But um, realistically, I mean, all this is is a text editor. Uh, someone reached out to me and said that they couldn't figure it out. And that, to be honest, with Adam, there's just there's not much you can figure out. Um, even out of the box, there's just there's just not much um, to it. It's a text editor. Uh, so, like any text editor, you know, um, tech, WordPad, whatever it is that you use on Windows, Linux, Text Edit. Um, if it's on Mac, it's just uh, Notepad plus plus. It's just a text editor. So file. And I'm going to open my folder for, I just downloaded it to my desktop. And then here's the repository I just downloaded. So I'm just going to click OK. And it opened the folder, which contains subdirectories for some of our different modules. So we, I was informed that it started to error out in the class section. So I'll go ahead and start there with um, the classes again. And I, I did have one request that came in asking me to uh, do some coding during this. Um, no problem doing that. I can absolutely do it. The reason I pre-staged most of this, and I'll probably still will pre-stage most of it, is that it keeps the video going so that, you know, you're not stuck sitting there watching me um, run through typos and code. But also, you know, um, Adam kind of does a lot of it for you. So it's already recognizing this as a Python file by the .py extension. And you can see it's uh, went ahead and highlighted a lot of things in here, such as the different classes um, that we've created. So we've created the class characters at the top. And I do realize I need to go back through on the theory on that. Um, so let's just go ahead and um, get into it then. So here is a class. So we are creating a class of character. Now what is a class? This is when we start to get into object-oriented programming. What a class is, is it is meant to describe an object in the real world. So what is an object in the real world? Well, it's anything. Real, it's any, it could be a box, it could be a piece of dust, an insect, it could be a tree. I'm literally just looking around right now. I mean, it can be anything in the real world. But we create these classes so that we can represent them in code. Um, so that's what a class is. So here we're creating the class of character, and I'm sticking with the Batman character theme that I have. And um, these three quotes here, that just set, uh, tells Python that this is like a description for the class, um, more like a note. So I can continue to add notes here if I wanted to. Um, you'll notice at the top I have commented out example one class. So if I typed in example one class, let's see if I can uh, see if I have a different theme um, that can make it a little brighter because I kind of feel this is pretty dark. I've got increased font size. I'll go ahead and do that as well. Um, let's see if it takes my normal. Let's keep taking that. 
What would you like the note to say? Wasn't talking to you. Um, so let's see. There we go. All right, so make that a little bit bigger. Cool. Um, and you talk about full pains. Um, Hmm. Um, let me check the preferences really quick. Um, some people like the fact that I go through and kind of troubleshoot some of this um, in the videos. Some people hate it, uh, so I can't please everybody. Um, I'll come down to themes. Uh, yeah, dark. So let's try making it um, Adam Light. Ah, oh, that looks a little better. Let's see how the code looks. Ah, that's... Got it. So I'll go back to my preferences. Um, and then syntax theme. Uh, let's do solarized light. And I'm actually going to turn this back to, let's go Adam Dark for that. All right, I like that better. And then I'll come over to demo code. I think that's a little bit better. Let's just check out um, a couple of the other ones real quick, just to make sure we got one that we like. Oh, that one's about the same. Uh, it's base 16 and then atom light. What's that look like? I actually like this atom light one better, so I'm gonna leave that. So hopefully that helps with um, the readability because everything else was a little dark. Uh, but what I was pointing out originally is you can see I have up here uh, example one class, but I've added this hashtag or this pound symbol before, and all that's doing is telling Python that this is a comment and it's for a comment for another developer. So you can see it even automatically kind of put it in italics right there. So if I go above this and add another, you can see it comments it out. So um, add, uh, Python will emit any comments that you have. And same goes for uh, three commas enclosed by, or um, three quote, single quotes enclosed by another three single quotes. Uh, this is also seen as a comment. You can also do this, one, two, three. And this is a comment, and one, two, three. And you can see it put it in red after I added the closing, uh, the closing double quotes right there. Because uh, now Python's gonna read this as a comment. So that's three different ways that uh, you can write in comments, and that's just used uh, for anyone else that's looking at your code. And yeah, that's basically it. But you can also use it to like comment out specific lines. So if I'm working on like a really big project and let's say I want to add something to this class of uh, characters, what I can do is just copy it and come down, uh, paste it. And then, uh, you know, maybe I'll go ahead and do one, two, three and one, two, three. And now that commented out that entire class and I can just continue building off of uh, this development version, if you will. Or you could just create a Git branch. It's up to you. No one way to do things in coding. Um, except I don't think, ah, there, that's what I was missing. Okay, so back to classes. So classes are used to describe objects in the real world. So that starts with the syntax class and then the name of the object or the name of the class. And uh, the name of the class should always start with a capital letter to indicate that it is a class and then I included a little description here. It's a class of Batman characters. And then there's that uh, define statement again, which this is a, a function, but because it's within a class, it is called a method. So the methods are functions that are members of the class. So I do this define, and then I have this init statement, this double score init statement. And you're gonna see that a lot if you continue uh, working on your development skills. And all that means is basically I'm initializing this class. And then I'm passing in uh, s several attributes for the class. Um, or since it's a function, yeah, um, actually these would be considered arguments. I apologize. So self is going to be the actual name of the object. So if I refer to down here, where I've got care, uh, I'm Creating the object chr1, which is short for character one, equals the character class. And then you can see I start passing in uh, the different arguments that are needed for the attributes of that class, which these are the attributes. So that self refers to character one, because this is a new instance of that object. 
I then call the class that I created right here. And I pass in the necessary arguments needed to build this object. So name is Bruce Wayne, alias, uh, alias is Batman, role is hero, and the ability is a master detective. Okay, so, uh, and then I've created uh, four more, or three more here, so each one of these is a instance of this class, or in other words, each one of these is its own object. So we have four objects describing a Batman character, which is an object in the real world. It's a character, it's a person. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this out. And we'll go ahead and punch back over here. Um, let me do a list. I'm gonna go into the SDN demo. I'll do a git status because it's a good habit to get into. As I did clone this, um, it says I'm up on main branch, origin main, nothing to commit, cool. If I do a list here, uh, there you can see it's module two. So I'll go into module two, or module three, I'm sorry. And then list, and all right, here's everything. Um, I can also come back out here, list, and I'm gonna create a virtual environment. Uh, so Python three, module vem, and then I'll just call it venv. And I'll do a source ven bin activate. And now you can see I'm in my virtual environment. So I'll go ahead and uh, start up the Python interpreter. And now I'm just going to go ahead and paste in our class. And there you can see the interpreter took our class. So now let's create our different instances of that class. And I'll copy that. Whoops. and paste it in. All right, so I uh, didn't, no errors or anything, which um, is telling me everything worked out well and that I should have now four different objects or four different instances of my class character. So now I can access those attributes just by throwing in self, which is the name of the object that we declared. And then I'll do um, name. And you can see uh, character one is Bruce Wayne, so I can now do character three, um, alias. Here we can see it's Joker. Character two, uh, role, and we can see Robin's a villo villain. Uh, character three, abilities, but you, you kind of see where I'm going with this. And that's what happens if you have a typo. Genius intellect, all right, cool. I'll quit out of this interpreter, clear my screen. Now I can also go into um, our module three folder. Actually, I don't think it's gonna let me do that because I didn't preset that up. Um, let me see for models, do I have models right here? Ah, I do have models, okay, cool. So I've um, also created um, these classes in the models module. So because I am in module three, and if I list, you can see that models, Dot pi. So when I go into my Python interpreter, I have just initialized a session of Python. That means that Python can see anything that is in the current directory with a .py extension. So what I can do here is do um, import models. You can see I have no error. So now I could do um, character one equals models dot uh, character. Actually, wait, um, character one equals model dot, yeah, uh, character. And then I'll do um, Selena Kyle. And uh, that's gonna be Catwoman. And villain. And uh, she's a master burglar. Let's see if that works. Um, it should because I'm pulling the models, character, Selena Kyle, Catwoman, and got all the arguments. So let's see if that takes. All right, and it did. So now if I do character1.alias, you can see uh, I've 
now just created another instance of that class just by importing the models which the models module which has our character class in it and then I just created a new instance of that class for character one models because that's what I imported up here dot and then the name of the class because that is included in the models module and then I filled in all my information. I could also do this, uh, import models as M and assign it an alias. Let's say I wanted to be uh, lazy with my typing and I'll do uh, character two equals M instead of typing in all of models because you can see I've just now imported models as M. So I can do models character and then I'll just go ahead and do Batman again. Bruce Wayne, Batman, hero, and genius intellect. So now if I do character two dot name, you can see it's returning just fine. Or I could import the class directly. So I could do a uh, from models import character and now I don't even need to um, add all that information so I'll do character 3 equals character and then I will do um, I'm trying to think of a good one ah I'll do um, Harvey Dent and then two face villain and his special ability, ooh, hmm. I'll just do genius or coin flipping. I don't know. <laughs> Trying to think of um, like his special ability, and I would have to go look at the Batman Wikipedia, which is where I got like a lot of. Um, you know, Batman fandom, which is where I got a lot of this. Um, but if I do now, um, character three alias, you can see it took just fine. So I was still able to make an instance of that class. Each one of these is done different based on the import statement that I did. If I didn't do that import statement, let me clear my screen, I'll do Python. And I just tried to do like uh, character equals uh, models dot character name alias uh, role ability I didn't like that I know I spelled it wrong but I'm just trying to go through but there you can see it says name models is not defined because I haven't defined it anywhere above I haven't imported it either so it does not know about it until I actually go to import models and now if I go ahead and type that in you can see it took just fine and the name is going to say name. All right, cool. Let me clear my screen and let's move on to the next example. All right, so here's where we start to make methods. And what a method is, is it's just a function that relates to the object that it is a member of. So here I've defined um, my class uh, character method methods. I uh, had to change it up a little bit because if I did uh, class character, character, character all the way through, they would end up overriding each other. Uh, so I went ahead and did a class character methods and then kept our attributes for the class and our attributes, again, are used to describe that real world object. So I can keep going and continue making attributes. Um, you know, their background, uh, physical appearance, personality, you name it. Uh, and then I'm defining these functions in here, which are very simple functions. Um, all they're doing is, um, you know, define get name, and then I'm passing in the argument of self and name equals self.name and then I'm returning that name value because I have to return it considering it is part of a function meaning it's local only to that function and not available globally so then I just did a method for uh, each one down here same with ability role alias 
And then I added uh, two things because a function is not only just supposed to return information about an object, that's really what the attributes are supposed to do, but I'm trying to keep this simple. Uh, but I'm going to have the character do something. So here I'm defining the function uh, character fight, passing in self, and then it's going to print um, whoever it is, you know, the self.alias plus, and then the string is fighting. And then I've also created the function usability where I am then printing to the screen their name plus uh, the string is using their ability and then it is uh, self.abilities. And I can do the import statements the same. So I'm going to do on this one from models import character methods. So let's go back over to here. We'll go into our Python interpreter and uh, from models import character methods. All right, sweet. So that took, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, paste our objects or our instances of that class in here again, so that I don't have to type it all out. And I can just do a couple of tests right here just to verify it's working. All right, cool. Character three um, alias UPC's Joker. All right. And now what we're going to do is actually start to use those methods. So in the same way that I was uh, just a moment ago, you know, uh, using aliases to import um, models as M, or I imported the class from the module, kind of the same syntax applies. So we have to call the class dot the method and then pass in the instance of that object that we uh, would like to run the method against. So I will do um, character three. So I got character underscore methods dot use ability and then I'm passing in character one. And if you come back over to our models, I did a models from models import character methods. So here's our character methods. It's the same as uh, you were seeing just a moment ago. Only difference is I um, didn't add in, you know, like all the characters and then uh, some of the example text that I was going to have here. But that means that it imported this class and all of the methods that belong to that class. So let's go ahead and uh, use the ability of Batman, and it says uh, Batman is using their ability of Master Detective. I can do a character, character underscore methods dot uh, character, what was it, fight, I think it was. And I'll do character two. Robin is fighting. And just so we don't leave out any villains, let's go ahead and uh, Bane is using their ability of peak human physical condition. So you, you're kind of uh, getting the drift here on this one because um, I can still do, you know, get name, uh, character three, and there it gives me, returns the character's name. I'm just do an up arrow and ooh, what was another one? Uh, get alias, and then I'll pass in character four, and there it's returning the alias of Bane. All right, cool clear my screen and let's go down to the next example all right so now we're going to get into inheritance so here I'm defining um, the class character inherit which I've I'm keeping the same methods that I kept originally from the previous classes that we were building only difference is, is now I am creating these classes down here of hero, but I'm inheriting everything from the character inherit class that is above it. So it is going to inherit all of these attributes and all of these methods that belong to the class character inherit. It's going to inherit everything that's a part of that. And then I did the same for villain, class villain character inherit and um, oh, I don't know why I have that one in there I think I was run I was doing some uh, testing let me see if I have that on this one which I do not yeah I don't have that one all right that was apologize this was just from some uh, 
testing that I was doing um, as I was reading through some different things and trying to see if there's multiple ways to do it. Um, so we'll focus on the model since if that's got that information in there. So at the moment, I am not actually making any changes to our character inherit class. I am simply creating a new class of hero, a new class of villain, and then they are inheriting everything from the character inherit class that's above it. So if we we'll look at this one, we're going to do a, so we're in the models module and we'll do a from models import character inherit. Let's see if that works. From models import character inherit. All right, so that took, so let's see what happens if we do a character one equals uh, hero. We'll just go ahead and do uh, Bruce Wayne. Batman. Uh, he's a hero. And Master Detective. Ah, did not like that. Why? Name error hero is not defined. That is because I've done from models import just the character inherit class. So if I quit out of here, quit the screen, come back in, and I do a from models import hero, and then separate them by a comma. Uh, then I'll do villain. Cannot import villain from models. Did I spell it wrong? Whatever. Sure, I got the spelling. I thought I had that right. All right, let's try just doing a uh, from models import hero. Well, that took from models import villain oh I spelled it wrong <laughs> all right so uh, what I was originally gonna do so I'll just uh, quit out of here uh, clear my screen just so I can do it again uh, from models import hero and villain all right that took so now I can do character uh, one again is equal to uh, hero since I imported that one directly We'll do uh, Bruce Wayne, Batman, he's a hero, and he is also a master detective. All right, cool. So now uh, let's see what happens if I run a character one uh, dot uh, get name. Bound character inheriting a get name of model object. I think that is because I have not actually uh, done the character inherit, so I didn't uh, import that get name. Let me just make sure that it's not get name. All right, cool. I don't have any typos. Ah, I know what it is. It's a method. Forgot to add my um, parentheses around it. Now, some of you have been reaching out to me, um, you know, like, I feel that you're struggling a little bit but don't want to kind of come out because you're just saying like it's confusing it's confusing well the classes you've had up to this point have focused on configuration and they're just there's nothing to configure on python it's it's ready to go it is about creativity that is what python's all about so whereas you may have been able to get through some of your last courses just by kind of following a set of instructions there's just no instructions um there's like if you actually did go out and get the Python crash course or the automate the boring stuff with Python, you'll notice they're doing the same thing is they're kind of going over theory and then they give examples, but there's no instructions because there's just nothing to instruct on. I can build whatever I want in here. I can build a web app. I can build a script. It's about being creative. So when you're first starting out, you have to start here in the interpreter 
and with simple scripts that just print stuff to the terminal, print stuff to the console, however you want to put it, because you got to learn to walk before you can run. You can't just jump into building web apps. I mean, that's pretty advanced Python stuff. I've got a few that, I mean, I could show you, but that, again, that's where it's like, okay, well, now we're talking like, I've got five different modules, modules within modules, classes of different, like it's quite advanced stuff. So if you're not getting the basics, it is because you are not practicing. You have to practice this stuff. You have to make errors in order to uh, work over them. Just how you saw me make a few errors. I was able then to work through those errors, but that's also, you know, I understand I did it a little flu more fluently, but that's because I've been working with this and I've been practicing. All right, so um, that goes into um, basically that one. Um, we'll go ahead and make a couple more real quick. So I'll go ahead and throw all my characters in there just so we can see it, um, it fully in action. Uh, I haven't, from models, import hero and villain. All right, now I'll go ahead and just paste in. All right, cool. And now I'll do character four dot uh, character uh, fight and there we can see everything is working and we are inheriting everything from the parent class above it all right sweet all right so now we're going to get into inheritance and we're actually going to uh, then actually start to make some changes to uh, the different classes. And let me make sure, because I saw that darn, I did this um, init again, because I was uh, playing around with this super one. Uh, so I don't think that that actually worked. Let's make sure I got it right in here. All right, cool. So I got it right in here. Uh, so here we're doing the character inherit with uh, methods again, but kept everything the same up here because a character fighting and a character using their ability, that could apply to both classes. But what I've done is I've made a few minor changes to our hero and our villain class, and I've added these methods in here of stop crime and fight villain, this one of which requires two arguments, self and the villain object. And you'll notice here I did print uh, self.alias plus uh, is now fighting and then villain.alias where we can really see the power of object-oriented programming. And then for our villains down here, I just went ahead and did uh, rob a bank. So let's go ahead. Ah, I made this mistake last time. So I actually named a uh, hero and villain the same. So what happened here is, um, although I have them defined without methods, when I did that uh, from models import hero and villain, it actually imported these two. So I didn't call these methods, but they would have been available. And that's because, uh, excuse me, the name matches. So these came first, but then they were overwritten down here because they have the same name. So to even show you, so I haven't touched anything, you know, um, we still have our character objects created, but I can now do a character, we'll do two, and that, uh, what were some of the methods I got for them, stop crime and fight villain. So I'll do character two, uh, stop crime, Robin has just stopped a crime. Uh, character one, dot fight villain, and then I'll go ahead, it's already accepting um, itself, as character one right here, so that will be passed into the method. So the second one I'm going to do is I will do a character four. Batman is now fighting Bane. Hopefully he doesn't get his back broken again. And if I do a, try and do a character three dot fight villain, or I'll do. Um, so I don't have to pass in another one. I'll do character three, stop crime. Let's see if that works. It does not. And it says there, attribute error. Villain object has no attribute, stop crime. Did I spell that wrong? All right, help if I uh, did it correctly. Has no attribute, uh, stop crime. And if I come over here and look, you can see stop crime is not spelled right. 
but it doesn't exist under that class. So this method, although they're inheriting from the same class, they have their own methods defined. So I will do quit and clear my screen of Python from models import hero and villain. Go ahead and paste in our heroes and villains really quick. Uh, that's not what I want because that is not the one that I want. There we go. That's what we did. pasted it in and I wanted to just uh, do a, a character for and rob bank so that we're not leaving out the villains whoop rob bank from models import hero villain all right takes one positional arguments but ah so here it's saying uh, Rob Bank takes one positional argument, but two were given. And that is because I don't know why, just out of habit, I threw in character three. Uh, so if I get rid of that, and then there you can see Bane has just robbed a bank. And I believe that does it for uh, methods and classes. Again, this is where I have to um, remind all of you to, you've, you've got to practice. Um, there was no instructions on for me to build out these classes. Um, you've, I've given you multiple sources of information. So you've got links on Canvas to go to, I like W3 Schools because it's short, sweet, and to the point. Check out those Safari books um, that I sent you, um, Safari books online. You've got the Automate the Boring Stuff with Python and Python Crash Course. Flip through them, see if anything interests you. But the idea with programming is that you've got to get creative and think of things that you can do inside of your program. Before we can start to get there, you have to know the theory. Whereas your previous classes have been on configuration and troubleshooting, this is a 100% theory class. So when I say 100% theory class, I can really only teach you what a class and a method is and I've given you examples but then it's up to you to use your own creativity and really get in here and make mistakes work through your mistakes understand what the mistakes are understand where your syntax errors are yes coding is very frustrating but I've told you a couple times now it is a journey it takes a long time I could have this class even for a year and I doubt we would get to the point where we're making things such as a web app. It's the same as if you took a class in a foreign language. You didn't go take the class and then all of a sudden you're walking out speaking Spanish. Now, did you, that just doesn't work that way. Um, even most foreign language professors will tell you you need to go like live there for a little while or live in a country where that's their native language in order to get completely fluent. So how do we do that in programming? We practice. We go through the to, through tutorials. We use different sources of information, but the key is being persistent. Continue to pick it back up. Continue to work on it. This is our, your textbook is an associate level textbook. That means it is a entry level material. And I have just taken one chapter and spread it over one week, which would be two weeks in a 16 week course. I can't slow it down anymore. I mean, that's two weeks on one chapter. All I can do is give you examples, tell you to be creative, tell you you've got multiple sources, you have my cell phone number if you're having trouble with something, but reaching out to me saying it's confusing, that is not, that is not you're having trouble with something. That's either you don't like the material, which I can't help you with that because I did not make the choice that network engineers and infrastructure engineers need to now know a programming language or a scripting language. If you're going to move into the Windows space, they're going to want you to know PowerShell now because I can get so much done faster scripting, especially repetitive tasks, than going through and clicking. I mean, anybody can come through and click a mouse. Anybody can do this. All right. Does, this is not rocket science. It, this is not a difficult task to go through and click buttons, enter in values. 
the industry is evolving. This is what the industry is saying you need to know in order to get to an infrastructure engineer level. Any decent entry level course that you go to will say just get started, be persistent, and keep at it. The skills will start to come. And I will, we will be uh, swapping this more uh, towards networking focused. I'm trying to make this um, as fun as possible, which is why I give you, you know, the options to realistically make the classes and the objects about whatever it is you want, anything that interests you just so that it's not becoming discouraging either that or we're going to have to start to go to things like making objects and classes that are routers switches and firewalls and most of the time people don't find that um, all that fun especially if they are not um, very you know if they're not at a proficient level with their networking knowledge So I will go ahead and get this posted. Sorry, I was not aware that we were having uh, issues with the uh, demo video. I'll go ahead and do a deactivate just so I can show um, then list. And I'll come back here, close it out, list. All right, cool. And I'll come back and uh, list it out, remove, uh, recursive force, stand demo. And now I've just removed the entire repository. Cool. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out but please be specific on what you are having trouble with saying it's confusing would be the same thing as if you were getting pulled over you got a ticket and all the ticket said was you broke the law you don't know what you did wrong you have nothing that you can work on you got nothing you can fix if you come to me and just say it's confusing um, i'm now officially interpreting that as uh, you don't want to read the material or you would like something that is take this this example and do that's not bachelor's level material. I'm not gonna give you an example and say do this exact exact example. That's not bachelor's level. Bachelor's level is here's the theory, practice the theory, read the theory, practice on it, keep practicing, and then use that theory to complete the assignments and the quizzes. If you have any problems, I am here to help. Please feel free to reach out to me, and I will go ahead and extend the due date for this module uh, to mid-late next week. But next week's module, um, that one, the due date is sound for right now. I'm sticking that. I'm leaving that one because I can't keep moving the whole class. The class ends. I can't move every module. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, extend the due date on this one. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Sorry that there was errors in that, and please reach out to me 